about yourself, that's that's fine. Um, but the initial thing I want to kind of start with um, is I went out and asked for volunteers to identify folks who would be good representatives of your community. Um, I was fairly vague about that, and that gave people some some issues in terms of trying to identify folks. But uh, what we were looking for was not kind of the mainstream conference attendee for IEEE. So in that vein, um, the first question, and, and I'll, we'll go in my view from from left to right here. We'll ask I ask Bob to start uh, Carson, and then Nicholas, and then and Tom. But it's when the term conferences comes to mind. Um, what does that evoke in your mind when someone says conference? What what does that mean to you? An initial reaction, an initial kind of gut. I mean, the pro I mean, it's such a wide term. I mean, it can be workshop, it can be formal presentations, it can be a gap fest. So, um, I, I, I mentioned one experience I had back was I was running one of the tracks at, at an ACM uh, National Computer Conference back in '83. I was running a track and then realized none of the panels were interesting. <laughs> that put together. Nothing I wanted to attend. Um, so it, it, I, I guess I don't have any too many preconceived notions. I think a lot of would you, for example, call a workshop conference like the one in Sydney? I don't mm -hmm. know. You, so it's more a question of how you use the term. I agree. Yeah, no, it's it's a term that has many interpretations, and and so that that's sort of what I'm trying to trying to get a sense of what your reaction is. Um, you know, Carson, when when the term conference is uh, described, or some you said someone, do you want to go to a conference, or you're interested in a conference? What does that evoke to you? What is what does conference mean? What are there are there some characteristics of of that? Actually, two two things come to my mind. First of all, um, it is well to stay technically updated. Um, because most of them are technical conferences, well, um, and well, it depends on the scale what you can draw draw out of it. Um, but the second thing comes to my mind is networking, and this is pretty much a good idea um, to go there, have your community, and well, I've attended big conferences, big IEEE conferences as well as small ones, and. Sometimes the small ones are the more useful in terms of uh, networking and also in terms of um, yeah, technical benefit, new insights, because they were more specialized. Um, yeah, that's th that, that are basically the two things that come to my mind. Okay, great, thank you. Nick, how about you? Um, several things uh, when you know I hear the term conference. Uh, one of them that's already been uh, mentioned is networking. Um, and then you know it's uh, the exchange of ideas of you know like new uh, technical ideas and technical challenges uh, that the presenter uh, you know presenting, um, and also you know a, a, a huge opportunity for me to learn you know, like these new ideas and uh, these new you know uh, techniques uh, and, and such, and uh, you know also you know. Uh, Workshops, uh, you know, that's 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 where we learn, you know, pretty much the most uh, in, in in workshops. Mm -hmm. Tom, over to you. Um, thoughts? So, on we ch chat a little bit that yesterday. Yeah. So conferences is one of many terms that is used to describe uh, social interaction between sentient entities. Um, there are workshops, there's symposia, there's a whole bunch of different terms. They each have particular meanings. Um, I can and I see that uh, conferences go all the way from things that are strictly social events, people just getting together because they have some common interest, to where it gets far more technical, uh, and that could be either on an industrial level or on an academic level. And a lot of the IEEE conferences tend to focus, for the most part, on an academic audience, and those are the people that participate, and that basically is um, who they generally play to. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if my chat comments showed up, uh, but part of the issue, you know, a lot of, I think might pick up that's a social event and that all too many of the presentations are really sort of formal presentations rather than, you know, things to learn from. And, that, I, and you know, the question is how, you know, the balance, well, it, it, I, I'm, I'm thinking out of my head. And maybe it's because I've been the business side so long 
I think about the social being more important because a lot of ways to get the technical and panels are often sort of a trip, you know, aren't necessarily the most advanced. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, it's things that have had a long time to prepare and the more to get credits, whereas talking to people and stuff, you know, you get a chance to direct and get the ideas. Right, right. And it's hard to comment on the panel at Globecom. It's sort of how successful was it attempt to sort of think outside the conference sort of uh, rationale. I don't know. Mm -hmm. the premise. Right. So, so it sounds like most of you have had some experience with IEEE conferences um, because I heard some of the characteristics of, of what we typically run. Uh, we've been we've been trying to use the term scholarly or technical conferences as a better way to describe what IEEE has. is typical of running, which means there's usually presented papers, a review process, and then um, a series of track sessions where people are presenting their research back to an audience. Um, sometimes they have invited speakers, but generally a lot of the motivation for the attendees is about being published. Um, are those things that are of interest to this audience at all? You want to follow the same order? Um, let's start with Karsten since um, we let uh, we let Bob go first time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So I was um, when I was visiting the conferences at first, it was about publishing. Uh, that's perfectly okay, but that was in an academic uh, context. So now I switched to uh, industry, and I'd say that the uh, to publish results is not in the focus anymore. It's more uh, to hear what is going on in the academia world. So it's more a consuming part, I would say, right now. Um, yeah. Um, so f for me, actually, it's, it's not, I'm not uh, able to publish any results right now without um, higher level management um, consent. Mm -hmm. or, so this is, it's more, but um, um, I know, well, I, I'm working in development right now, working in the same company, Robert, Robert Bosch, uh, for research, and it's quite common to for the research department uh, to visit um, bigger conferences. There, there's, a, uh, there's a spreadsheet where, um, where everybody is, um, can make wishes which conferences he'd like to, to visit. Mm -hmm. um, to to know about the the new developments, um, yeah. So uh, when it comes to development, it's it's probably more uh, paper reading where you get your technical updates from. So let me just follow up with that then. So from your perspective, from for you attending a research oriented technical conference, is that a good way to consume research, or are there other types of conferences that you'd you know, if you have a limited number to go to that you would choose to, to spend your time um, that may be more industry focused, that may have more industry-wide networking or, or broader coverage? Um, I'd say um, bigger conferences is a, is a better place to get a better overview, maybe uh, with uh, some attached workshops. Um, for instance, uh, the um, uh, uh, pet and machine recognition sort of conferences, they are quite huge. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the good thing there is that most of the presentations are poster presentation where you have a direct contact with the author, um, which makes it a very intense, um, yeah, well, you have like 40, 60 papers presented as posters, and uh, the conference is mainly stacked. Um, with sessions that have posters, like 60, 40 posters. Um, and you, if you want to know everything, well, that's pretty much, well, that's too much. And so you have to focus on some things that you're interested in. But you have the direct contact to the author, which is a very good way um, to consume it, because um, you're forced to get to know what's the essence of the mm -hmm. paper in a, in a very few sentences. and. Uh, yeah, this is quite good. Good, good. Okay, Nick, um, what about your thoughts on technical conferences? Do you uh, have any continuing contact with them? Have you had any in the past? Yeah. So um, 
Also, the technical conference that I'm interested in is uh, the, in, uh, the industry one. Um, you know, there's uh, for for academia, uh, you know, like research. You know, it's it's fine, uh, but most of the time, like the theory don't get you know like thoroughly tested tested it out first. Um, and you know, there's a uh, it's a it's a big difference and big challenge from you know uh, implementing. That theory and get it to work on a product, and you know, releasing a product uh, that that works, uh, than than just with uh, a bunch of uh, textbooks theory. I think. Okay. How about you, Tom? I know we we started talking a little about that yesterday. You had some. So I, I was wondering if this would be an appropriate place to talk about that. Um, you know, I've gone to a fair number of IEEE conferences. I participated and even organized a few of them. So maybe I'm kind of the ringer from what you said you were looking for, but uh, my impression is that a lot of IEEE conferences are indeed academic oriented. The purpose is for a student, it mostly, or for um, a professor to either establish their credentials or to maintain their paper count so that they can be seen as an active participant in the industry. The problem with a lot of these papers is that although they are unique and they may be interesting, they're generally not practical in the sense that uh, a lot of times it's it's difficult to take what they what what they are talking about and turn that into a product. It, there's steps to be taken along the way, um, and that's kind of what you expect from a student. The student is going to make some adventure. He's going to learn some things. He's going to develop skills mm -hmm. in the course of writing a paper. However, it and at a lot of the IEEE conferences, as a consequence, many times the main the majority of the attendees are the people making the presentations or their professors mm -hmm. you know so it's kind of a contained audience it doesn't it's 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 not a broader audience that brings in people from outside on the other hand there's probably a good majority of IEEE members and other people that are no longer in act are either not in academia or no longer in academia and they work for uh, companies who are interested in practical applications of technology for the th kind of things we're talking about. And as a consequence, um, what draws them to conferences or to webinars or other types of events oftentimes is things that have a focus on applications. They're not so much published papers as PowerPoint presentations. They're not so much unique research, for the most part, as reviews of ways in which things that are already known can be put together in order to create, create um, products and services that can create revenue and that can benefit other people. Mm -hmm. And so those are some, I think there's some IEEE conferences that have some of these features in them. I think there's a great deal for, uh, there's a, a need to increase that, um, if you will, industrial, non-academic presence. Mm -hmm. And I think to do that, you probably got to appeal to a different type of, uh, a different type of presenter someone who's presenting, say, review, presenting on products, on applications, versus presenting on some unique uh, publishable research in the classic IEEE sense. Mm -hmm. Great, good. Um, well, you, you, know, you mentioned um, webinars. One of the things that we had wanted to talk a bit about as well was um, the approach and format for delivering delivering uh, conf conferences in whatever form they are. Has anyone participated in anything that's virtual or other formats, unconferences, um, disjointed, you know? Oh, uh, oh by the way, I think, I think that, uh, uh, that Bob wanted to say something there. So, well, I, I, sort of briefly, I, I, you know, I've been in business, the business, business world a lot. And, but I've also been reviewing some of the papers, just a few quick quotes. First, in reviewing the papers, especially like this last Globecom, I, I have a challenge. Plus, I want to say, okay, this is not, this is sort of the equivalent of the class project thing. It's, it's well written and everything, but it's not particularly new. And a lot of them are sort of very narrowly, you know, uninteresting. And they they are really for the academic credits. But I think in terms of, you know, I also ask, why is this person presenting? What are they selling? You know, they might be selling an education thing with webinars that people might want that. They might be selling the corporate product. But I tend to think about why. So it's, I can understand one product in academia is yourself. 
And, you know, so the real question is what, you know, is the IEEE looking at conference as a product of how to make it better? Sort of mm -hmm. what's the larger goal of these conferences? Uh, and mostly, I, you know, I've been attending conferences for the social reasons. As I said in my comment, you don't want the panel to get the panels to get in the way of the social interactions. I've also attended a number of unconferences and retreats, which are other forms, like a retreat, you know, that are, that are more mixed. And where there's a social aspect where people get a chance to do presentations. And those are usually actually more interesting. Uh, I don't know how that factors into what you <coughs> do. And I tend to shy away from webinars simply because I like to read, read and control my own pace and I find webinars too frustrating. Mm -hmm. but, that, but I'm speaking for myself. People without ADHD might enjoy them more. <laughs> Well, I mean, obviously, a technology is is progressing. Where that's been the great mystery of how do you how do you deliver uh, events in that format? And as expense goes on, you know, expense control. And you know, in the U.S., we have great uh, gnashing of teeth about government spending on on events and things like that, and trying to look for assistive technologies to overcome that. Let's just ask the NSA for funding. <laughs> Um, let me. Let's, so let me. Um, I'm going to ask Nick, um, sort of following on a little bit what what Carson talked about, and, and, and since both of you work for for organizations where I imagine that you don't have unlimited budgets to attend conferences or to do training and those kinds of things, um, as you look to stay current, uh, and you have some fixed resource to go to, both time and, and financial. Is there a decision making you go through? Is there a sell-in process that you've got to work with with your boss and and your organization in terms of what value you're going to bring back from an event? And what do you look what do you look for? And what's the criteria? Yeah, sure. Um, so usually, if there's a conference happening, uh, you know, our uh, our group leader uh, will send out an email asking, you know, if one or two of us would like to uh, go to the conference. Uh, and then you know he would just set up the expense and and, and let us go. Uh, but in terms of uh, webinar and stuff, we do plenty of those here too as as well. Because um, you know I know you know like Agilent has a lot of, of of their training on their software which we use, and we you know attend you know like those webinars quite quite a lot. Uh, but you know, there's, there's there's certainly there's certainly uh, a budget for for attending conference in in in, uh, in our group. So so let me ask you this: Let's say there was a conference that you really felt was going to be helpful, good speakers, opportunity for networking and some social interaction, and it turned out that they had an option that you could participate virtually. And as you present that to your group, they said, "Well, you can go virtually, but but we don't have the resource to go." Um, physically, in, in you know, be be there on site. Would that be attractive to you? Would you have an interest in that, or or is this or the social and networking components um, as as important? Yeah, so I, I guess it, it it would depend. Um, you know, if there's a lot of uh, good papers and uh, good talks, you know, in the conference, that's that's just really interests me. Then you know, I would ask them to actually send me there because. You know, after the presentation, you know, you might want to talk with the presenter, mm -hmm. uh, you know, himself, and then ask a few follow-up questions because there's only so much time in the webinar that 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 they allow. And you know, when you when when you, when when you're there uh, personally, you have you have much more time to ask questions on on the uh, presentation that that most interests you. Okay. <clears throat> um, anyone else have any thoughts on that? So trade-off you make. I guess you go. I'm gonna let Tom go. Oh, okay. So um, I think there's uh, there's probably more things that I know I would like to be involved in that I have time or money to do in terms of actually going to it. Um, I think um, for myself and I think for other people as well, there'd be a real benefit to be able to get an online presence. So even if you can't do the interaction, which interactions have a lot of value. But even if you can't be there for the interaction for one reason or another, that you can still somehow be a participant. And I think it's also a way of increasing our impact on a wider audience with IEEE conferences, is if we give an option where people can have a remote experience, it's better than no experience. 
and mm -hmm. it may broaden the audience, may broaden the discussion. And as our tools for interactive, um, for online interactions like this one, for instance, improve, then you know that could become even more immersive and and even more like um, you know being being there in actuality. Although again, I don't think there's a real replacement for actually being able to go off and get a drink with somebody later on and talk about some topic mm -hmm. of interest. Yeah, difficult to replace the relationship building, absolutely. But it's nice to have something, you know, so that you're not totally, you're not totally, uh, you have options to participate, even if not participate as fully as you'd like to. Well, concerning the online um, conferences, I'd say um, what I, I really feel is a benefit is uh, having the, uh, the speech or, or the oral presentation recorded so you can rehear you re rehear uh, the speech, or if you couldn't participate, at least get a sense uh, in how the topic is presented. Because there really is a benefit in the author speaking um, to an audience and trying to explain his thoughts. Um, I really enjoyed um, having those either on a CD, um, uh, thumbstick, or even online. Okay. Uh, the comment, um, it's not just a live presence, the archival pr presence. I mean, I was looking at it and noticed my, uh, the Globecom video is never posted. It, what is the policy on posting videos from the conferences? In terms of proceedings, you mean, and then the presentations? Well, well, actually, that's a whole, I mean, there's a whole separate topic of the finance of the conferences and limiting access of the journals and things for the IEEE. But, uh, in, you know, is there a, what's the policy on, on having videos of the presentations available, especially if you're a webinar? Uh, I, I think that they, many conferences do have at least um, excerpts, highlights from but, but it, events. But, but in, yeah. not, not typically, at this point, it's not typically whole, uh, whole tracks or whole presentations. You see, and, uh, and, and that's an interesting thing because there's a social aspect going to, to conferences, which are you know important. But to the extent you want to pretend that there's intellectual content that's valuable, it should be valuable archive. And that's you know. So the question is, you know, if, if you're taking the, and, and we want to ask the others who actually go more for it. You know, for Nicholas and Carlson, who go there to more learn things, how, would they appreciate having the archive of the presentations available to choose from rather than just having to plan ahead? Yeah, yeah, d uh, definitely. Um, you know, I always look, you know, forward to the uh, archive, uh, either video or the presentation itself after the presentation for me to, you know, slowly go at my own pace at the part where I don't uh, quite get during the presentation. So it definitely uh, is helpful. Mm -hmm. I'd agree too, yeah. Um, having an archive is a good thing to um, yeah, re either relive if you have been there or if there's an, um, uh, a presentation you really love to have um, been attending but couldn't because your colleague was going. Uh, it, it's always a good idea to have access to this, um, to what form or ever. I'm also okay. asking a deeper question, which affects sort of the whole IEEE conference business. Right. It, it, it is now that it's easy to do videos, I mean, fixed camera, whatever, you don't have to be the highest production quality. How does that affect the con concept of the conference? Because, it's, again, to the extent you want to make this information available. Mm -hmm. Right. It, right. Is that a competition? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I think it's a good point. Um, I, I want to pose a different uh, question in terms of we've talked a little bit of a lot of what we've talked about today is in the in the context of IEEE conferences. So let's set them aside and say that IEEE conferences were not available to you, um, or as you as you make choices in what events you go to, um, who are the Producers, who are the organizers, who run the other events that that you will spend your time going to? Are they, uh, it, it, you know, manufacturer software companies? Or are they uh, publishing organizations, universities? Where where do you 
where, what other conferences have you attended by other organizations outside of IEEE? Outside of CA. Outside of IEEE in total. Let's. Are there other associations like IEEE? Are they industry organizations, manufacturers? Um, who wants to go? Tom? I'll go. Um, so I go. I've, I've been to a lot of different events put on by various people, you know, other professional organizations, ACM. Um, you know, I do, I've done th things in magnetic recordings. There's been groups that have been involved in magnetic recording. There's trade associations. Um, a number of us here are associated with the Consumer Electronics Society and therefore uh, probably been to some of the big trade shows like the, C the CES that happens every year. Mm -hmm. um, I also put on a couple of conferences myself, you know, that are related to digital storage and uh, and content. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of different uh, events that I've that I've gone to. There also are things I've gone to that are put on by manufacturers. You know, that are trying to get people interested in the technology and application, and ultimately their products or services as well. Um, you know, and some of these are actually are webinars online, and mm -hmm. some of them are, you know, physical uh, uh, physical meetings that happen. So there's a lot of everyone. People like to be together. We're social animals, mm -hmm. and there's a million and one different uh, different groups that help to organize folks. In fact, one just recently I've got involved in is called Meetup. It's an online community where people can basically create, uh, you know, you can create a, a connection on some topic, and people can perhaps spontaneously create meetings, but also there's people that will, like I've used this for some of my events, mm -hmm. um, to get people's word out and try to find new folks who might be interested in the topic. How about others? Other um, organizations that sponsoring events you go to? Well, I, I go to sort of more collective type events. A lot of them have been sort of industry. More VCs, Wall Street Journal, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of the business side where, and, and hack, things conferences that are more for hackers, or that are more workshops, retreats, unconferences, all sorts of uh, oddball events. I tend to shy away from more academic conferences. Though, if I remember, a sort of a history and nostalgia event might be fun. But the purely technical stuff, um, unless it's for the audience, you know, is it, sort of low down. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm not sure whether I'm not representative or just free to attend what's interesting. <laughs> uh, but this is also why I'm asking sort of the more working engineers. But, well, there are two different topics. One thing, when have a meeting locally with local uh, IEEE consumer electronics people, and the question is, what is consumer electronics in its relationship to the IEEE, which is a, not a trivial question because it doesn't fit in the sort of well-structured engineering mm -hmm. paradigm for communication and channels and all that. So uh, that's a whole set of issues I'm, I'm struggling with, you know, figuring out where it goes. But I do want to understand sort of how much conferences, you know, a really learning experiences versus those of us who are sort of constantly doing it and do it more for more collect. Mm -hmm. Right. So for practical engineers, people? Yeah. Carson, who else uh, who who else competes for your attention at at physical events or conferences? Well, um, we have uh, offers like for uh, whatever software training, which are um, directly from the company itself that is selling a product we use or software we use. That is more a hands-on training, um, but this would be very specific. Um, mm -hmm. It's not in. Um, yeah, it wouldn't compete to an IEEE conference, which is more broadened. Uh, the other thing is like uh, keynote speakers or invited speakers, uh, like seminars or workshops that are concentrated on a, uh, yeah, well, also topic, but which is not a product, uh, but could be um, like like a topic, like invited speakers. We had uh, professors that gave sort of lectures or lecture series. Um, and there's other companies besides IEEE that are maybe um, on a local basis uh, offering um, conferences. For instance, uh, I live in Germany, in German, which makes um, communication sometimes more easy mm -hmm. if you can do it in your, um, uh, in your own language. 
Yeah, but uh, IEEE plays a big role. It, they have so many good conferences to offer. It's hard to think they're, uh, yeah, um, what if they would not have been there? So um, <laughs> it's hard to think like that. So it's hard to exclude them from your from the consideration set, obviously. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. At least in my in my topics, right. <laughs> right. Uh, Nicholas, any any other groups that you look to or that you gravitate towards? Yeah. Um, so most of the uh, conference uh, I've been to is uh, IEEE, uh, but besides IEEE, uh, you know, we all FMD you know has our internal uh, conference as well every year. And uh, you know we have uh, outside outside speaker come in and speak, you know, for a session or two. But most of the time, uh, the the talk is 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 not very technical. It just uh, it just you know what's the trend that the industry is heading towards to, and you know what's the forecast or prediction uh, of of that trend is. Um, but yeah, I guess you know, um, actually, conferences is, is is probably like the major one that uh, mm -hmm. people go to. Okay, so so we talked a little earlier about um, one of the comments was that you know that some of the technical conferences are f are fairly specific in terms of the area that they're focusing on. You know, they're very vertical in a in a technology. Mm -hmm. um, IEEE started running some other multidisciplinary oriented so they may be topical like uh, cloud computing um, electric vehicle um, and maybe even some that are a bit more problem solution oriented let's let's say like uh, providing accessible broadband for you know f uh, widely and make that ubiquitous um, do you think topics like that would be in more interesting to an industry a practicing engineer versus in, versus what you're currently seeing from IEEE um, anyone react to something like that? Um, I mean, obviously, I've got an interest in that. So, in a sense, sort of policy perspective uh, issues. I th I think anything would be fair game. So there could be technology issues. There could be uh, infra. Yeah, there could be policy. There could be a number of other aspects of that. Because one of the questions again is the workshop versus conference versus scaling. Um, some you know. What things attract people to sort of come to a city versus what's good for group gathering? You know, there's also the opposite, the, sort of the distinguished lecture thing where you're going to the groups, mm -hmm. sort of put the model, and you have audience around and you send the speakers around. But that's for, you know, some, again, that's more not so much the academic as the kind of things, you know, we're talking about where, you know, groups and stuff want. You know, invited speakers, but you can, you know, make, and where does that, again, I'm thinking out loud, where does that fit into your model, sort of the cliff side, where you're sending the speakers rather than the attendees around? Okay. And anyone other thoughts on, like, the, the broad multidisciplinary uh, topical yes, this, conference? So this is Tom, and I've been involved. A lot of these um, things that you've been talking about are associated with these new initiatives. Mm -hmm. uh, within the IEEE, like cloud computing, life science, things of that sort. Um, there's a new one coming up, which is smart cities. And I think conferences can be a very important uh, addition to the other activities that are going on. It's sort of the public, it can be, it could be the public face of these, of these activities that the IEEE is doing, which are multidisciplinary, involve multiple societies, and address, you know, hopefully address real needs by uh, mankind. And, um, you know, so I think it could serve a very important function. It also, I think, is a good venue to get some of these more industrial or non-academic speakers involved because you're dealing with, with larger issues. In fact, not only that, but also, you know, public policy people and government folks, various other people involved in them, too. So I think there's, there's in my own mind, there, and maybe I'm biased, there's a, there's a benefit in doing that. Well, yeah, and I should just say my own bias, and Tom brought up with smart cities, is, you know, my articles and stuff have been sort of addressing those issues. And it's not, you know, in the context of the CE group, but it's unclear how to scale it sort of larger concern. 
Nick or Carson, um, anyone have thoughts? Or have you seen anything like that? Um, um, I go, okay, I'll go first. Um, <laughs> no, I haven't. Um, okay. And uh, I was, as you just brought that up, I was just thinking, well, maybe I'd like to attend, but um, uh, it's hard to reason to get the funding for it, maybe. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, uh, sometimes it's, um, for, for the practicing engineer, it might be clear that things are connected, but might not be uh, very easy to communicate to the, uh, to the management or the funding. So that might be um, an issue with a multidisciplinary, whereas uh, um, especially in, in bigger companies, there's, there's also a vertical structure, mm -hmm. um, which is maybe the better model for specialized conferences. Okay. So, so multidisciplinary would need to show some clear benefit for, a, for an industry engineer attending and how that would, he could bring back value to their organization and have some well, applicability there. Yeah, uh, as you mentioned, the electric vehicle, that, well, they, the company, well, we're an automotive-driven company, um, and that might be a good choice of topic, which is narrow enough, but still has some open space for a lot of topics, like from uh, um, in-car entertainment to, um, well, power issues. Um, so it has to be some specific, uh, electric vehicle is a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how to, I could sell uh, my, my group leader, uh, I want to go to a smart city mm -hmm. conference. So that might be, well, um, another business section then. But, mm -hmm. but you know, if, if we had this as a, an online option or I could participate remotely, you know, there probably is enough uh, interest in these various areas where you could actually get a pretty good, um, you know, online uh, participation in events like that. Could be, but um, since also the time you have to spend for, for attending the conference also does account for some costs, mm -hmm. might be, well, depending on the time zone, you could, uh, um, as a, as a, for personal interest, you could, could do that. Which yeah, or, or if it was recorded, you could listen to it later or something. Yeah. Right, right. But the smart city, again, given this part of my interest, you could get, it, it's great if Cisco is selling you smart cities gear, that can work well. It doesn't work as much for disruptive ideas where you really need to have a discussion in person makes a difference. So there, you know, you need, so there's sort of both sides to this. Well, you know, but that's changing, I think, you know. Um, as the cost of travel goes up and, uh, as our tools for the electronic interactions get better, I suspect that we're going to be doing more and more stuff like what we're doing here now, where we can look at each other and talk to each other. It's not the same as I can, you know, reach my hand out to Karsten and shake his hand or something, but, you know, we still are talking to each other. Karsten, you want to work on that one? <laughs> <laughs> you don't quite have that down yet. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I, I, I actually agree with Tom. I, I just, um, it's just it, uh, But this guy, I, I guess maybe it's also part of the larger issue, but I brought up is why are people giving the talks and sponsorship and things like that? And it's easy to sell sort of well defined products than to have open ended discussions, which are more the workshop type things. So you could sort of have a gathering, but there's also the problem of scaling. Like this will work fine for half a dozen people or so, but it's hard to scale a discussion. Because you can't have the multiple side discussion, all these things which allow scaling it in person. Right. Which is, it is sort of an ironic part to this, because the technology should allow much more scaling electronically, but our tools aren't there yet. Hmm. A topic for, uh, for a workshop. <laughs> I, Nick, I don't know if you had, a, had any thoughts on multidisciplinary. Uh, does that relate to you? Is that anything that uh, would be of interest? Yeah, it's uh, for me. It's it's definitely you know like enjoyable to go to one of these talk outside you know like what I'm doing because sometimes you know the, you're so you're so you know specifically into one thing that you know going to like 
a bigger system like uh, the power grid or the uh, smart city, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, electric vehicle is is, is is definitely more enjoyable, and you can you can you can relate to what you're doing, and um, and um, um, you know, um, but but the thing is, you know, it's 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 funding, right? I mean, asking like like Carsten said, asking my group leader to go into a uh, electric vehicle conference is is it's probably not 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 a good idea. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let me just shift gears a little bit. Um, just get your thoughts on on some of the elements that are not part of the main topic of events, but some of the and some of the things that are on the side a little bit. Uh, we've seen increasing inclusion of uh, consideration for things like social responsibility, um, humanitarian issues, sustainability. Uh, do those things make a difference as you evaluate and look at conferences or other choices for you to, to take your time to go to? Are, are those uh, part of your decision set? Are they nice to have or, uh, or not even not even really uh, at all a concern. Anyone have any thoughts on that? I'll just track you for just one second. So could you repeat the question? Um, some conferences have introduced elements of um, either humanitarian activity, social responsibility. You know, some some have uh, opportunities for the attendees to participate in. Um, uh, Habitat for Humanity or some kind of event where they're giving back to the community, uh, introducing some aspects of, of sustainable, you know, green meeting practices, trying to trying to run the event in a, in a less impactful way, um, or having an output, you know, a problem-solving portion of, of the conference that's really devoted towards addressing a human issue of some sort. Um, so that there's, it's not just about people listening to speakers, there's also some point where they are giving back in, in one way or the other. Do those are those issues important as you would consider going to a conference or an event, one versus another, or is it what would be the you know where would that rank compared to other priorities? You know, that's probably one that's hard for someone who works for a company to get their company to fund them going to. You know, unless unless they actively have something going on there. Right. Um, I'm involved. I, I'm you know, director elect for Region 6, and we've got a uh, global humanitarian technology conference we're doing in San Jose in October. And also there's a sustainability conference that's going to be associated with the IEEE USA meeting um, at the beginning of, uh, of August. And, you know, those are addressing some of those kind of uh, things. Um, I think it's, it's unless a... Uh, uh, unless a company has an active work going on in those areas, like say Google might have, and some of the humanitarian stuff associated with the crisis management with Google Maps activities, things like that, it's probably hard to get uh, the industrial participation in it. But I think, you know, I just I generally think that there are important things for the IEEE to be involved in and to reach out to um, a place where our technology can places where our technology can be applied to do some interesting things. Hey, by the way, Karsten. And uh, and Bob, uh, that sustainability conference, Kyle's going to come, and he's a little further along in his video, so he's going to show some more footage from that. We have Very a guy, from, yeah, a guy from the Consumer Electronics Society who is uh, putting together a video. And Nick, Nicholas, you're associated too, aren't you? I'm not. <laughs> oh, okay. You should, you should join the Consumer Electronics Society. Anyway. <laughs> Tom, can you put a URL into the chat to learn more about that? What say? A URL. So I can get learn more about it. And oh, learn. Uh, so um, look up sustainability. Uh, I triple E Sustech, S U S T E C K C C H. Excuse me. And then the Global Humanitarian Technology Conference is the other one. But it, it's really going to be hard for someone to get a company to pay for you to go to those things. You know, unless your company is working on that. But a good idea could be um, to use, let's say, uh, this this uh, international platform for companies to uh, promote that they are also interested in such uh, topics. I think, um, um, well, at least my company has a social uh, codex. I would call it um, some some basic ideas, rules uh, that are also connected to to. Um, Social aspects of technology, mm -hmm. uh, and 
Well, maybe <laughs> I don't know if if engineers uh, on this on this uh, lower level are the right addresses for that, but could be someone, um, yeah, either higher level or um, yeah, other yeah, public relations could be the right addresses for that. Well, by getting involved, they show they're good citizens, that kind of stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, yeah. I, I hate to be too cynical, but when you mention public relations as part of it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not to be um, <laughs> free advertisement. That's not the thing. <laughs> no, this is what, again, I mean, a, a part of it, I mean, this goes back to the thing I mentioned about smart cities and stuff. Uh, there's a big architecture problem. If you don't understand the word architecture, sort of architecture done by the marketing department. Ah. <laughs> um, I think we talked, I've heard a bit about this, but um, again, some of the elements around conferences outside of the main topic are, is it, I think I've heard that networking is important. Um, is that a fair statement? Is anyone who doesn't think that networking is a, an important element for, for uh, attending a conference and event? Are there any other reasons? <laughs> um, does it... Uh, do you look for any industry participation, either as a, as a, whether it be in the in the form of exhibits or some type of um, speakers, uh, patronage? Does, does that contribute to an event I, I, from I your perspective? Uh, one event I run Tom into sometimes is a conference by Tripoli stopped holding thirty years ago, but the attendees can still come. This is social. Those are called reunions. No, it's sometimes. not. Really, it's more off the record. Of oh, okay. Um, what about about industry participation? Is that you know exhibitors? Or are you looking to, to go and have a opportunity to to see a number of place a number of products in one location? Um, is that useful, or is that just a, a nice nice thing to have, but not critical? Uh, for me, for the conferences are able to attract that, the IEEE conferences particularly, if I'm working in that area, it was interesting. For instance, uh, I, I went to some magnetic, you know, magnetic recording is my bag, and I went to some conferences put on by the IEEE Magnetic Society and Magnetic Recording, and the exhibitors that would come to that are very specialized area. Mm -hmm. It could be very interesting people, you know, that are involved in fundamental magnetic measurement equipment um, and things of that sort, or software for doing simulation, those kind of things. So it was. It was. Uh, it was, in my mind, a good venue for meeting uh, people that might be a benefit to you. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think it's very important, uh, you know, to have an exhibit of of all the other company as well, because you know we, you know, to show their best product and against our product, and you know, compare, you know, to see where we at or where they at, um, or you know, go to a a, a whole. Different uh, company and see mm -hmm. what they're working on. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I also oh. think that's. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, that, I also think that uh, uh, products um, are and uh, products being shown also at conferences is a very good thing because um, actually that that's what we are working for, right? We we, we love to make products or uh, consume products or use products, and uh, yeah, it's. What's what's the the ultimate goal of it? Even in academics, they want to make yeah something happen. Um, well, at least that's my motivation. And mm -hmm. to see somebody uh, every actually having a product that sort of uses some of the latest technologies that is just being presented is just a good thing. Okay, great. Well, we're coming down to five minutes, and I just want to um, have a couple of quick wrap up questions. So. It sounds like this group um, does have some good experience, in, not only in terms of positive experiences, but also has frequented IEEE um, conferences. As a whole, do you feel that you're getting what, what you need from IEEE conferences or the things that you'd be looking for that, that we could somehow enhance or improve that um, through, through events or the things that you would be looking for that you currently don't receive? Well, I'd like to put, you know, to say I think we need a more online presence for some of these conferences. At the very least, I think um, having recordings or even just the PowerPoints from very interesting presentations like keynotes and things of that sort available, even for view afterwards, if not during the event, could be very uh, a very valuable addition. 
to many event, many events. And is that something you'd be willing to pay for? Uh, I think it might be. Yes, if for instance, especially if I didn't go to the conference, then uh, mm -hmm. that would be my way of getting that, access to that information, depending on the price, of course. Well, right. where would it fit in the digital library? Well, this I'm kind sorry. of goes to the digital library mechanism. Mm -hmm. what, you know, one thing to consider is making it part of that. Okay. Um, anyone else? Any, uh, any thoughts on that issue in terms of um, things that you'd look for? Yeah. So, uh, does does IEEE have like a like a, a YouTube uh, of their their own kind of YouTube? Maybe it's called IEEE Tube or something, where you know just video of uh, you know good presentations uh, archived that that we can uh, you know that that we can access for for IEEE members, of course. Right. Well, there is IEEE TV, but um, okay. it, it's, it's not comprehensive in terms of you know every con every speaker from every conference or even every keynote speaker from every conference. It's selective in, in how they do that. Again, I, why I wanted to bring into the digital library framing. In other words, the video should not be something separate from the other publications. Agree. Okay. Um, I, we're getting close to, to the end of the hour, and I said I would respect that. Are there are there any things that I didn't talk about, or things that uh, that you wanted to when when you were requested to join? Were there things that you had wanted to express, or ideas that you had wanted to share um, with IEEE and conference organizers? Free form, whatever whatever you have on your on your side. Anyone? Um, a comment on registration processes and that sort of thing is that sometimes. Uh, sometimes they're easier to use and sometimes less and sometimes if you are traveling and you're trying to get your hotel room and stuff it's easier to figure out how to do that and sometimes less so um, tra more transparency in doing registrations I think is something that you know IEEE as a whole could be working on. Okay. For that, uh, the IEEE website can be better organized for all this information. Period. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Carson or Nicholas, anything? Last comments from anybody? Um, not at the moment. Okay. Well, that's. I appreciate appreciate everyone's uh, input. Um, a very good discussion. Uh, Gave uh, us a lot uh, of good stuff. One, one quick more thing. Sure. One track in addition to social is that the conferences are interesting place at interesting places that provides an additional reason to get one one's manager to pay. You find the conference is an interesting place. Then you you back up a reason to attend it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. Is that true, Carlson or Nicholas? <laughs> well, it's it's a bonus to have it at a good city. <laughs> yeah, if it's in uh, if it's in Hawaii. I will you know work as hard as I can with my uh, group leader to send me there. <laughs> yes, it's just the other thing is it may be seen as more of a boondoggle if it's some uh, place. Well, if, it was, was, if you're clever, but that is yes, it is a boondoggle. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to bring it to a close. I don't. Uh, I really, like I said, I appreciate your time, and I want to want to be respectful. Nicholas and Carson. Uh, Nick Nicholas needs to get back to work. And Carson's got to get home to his family, or has to spend some time with his family, and. Uh, Tom and Bob, thanks very there much. There is one more thing, Kevin, and I'll Go just ahead. give it to you personally, and that is that uh, a lot of the society conferences, they need to get a tighter connection in with the regional folks. It's a mutual benefit. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Have a great day. I appreciate your time. And we, um, you. look, Tom, do you have a few okay. minutes? I want to right. contact you just right now. Why don't okay. you give me a call? A phone, or, or you want to do this? No, no, give me a phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 